Tonight's topic is the Amateur Radio Community Intensity Map, or ARC-IM, as we called it. And we used that for ShakeOut 2024. The idea here is we'll give you a little bit of a background for about 10, 15 minutes, and then we'll go into the map. And <clears throat> as we are talking about the map, um, we would also love to hear your experience with it. Um, if you used it, if your group used it, this was a real community effort, a grassroots, public, private community effort. And that was just wonderful to see as a result. And as a little bonus, I will actually show how many of you have seen the official um, map from the USGS yet? Show hands. No? All right. I'll, I'll show you. I'll show you the official map in a little while. So thank you so much for joining us tonight. And let's get this party started. All right. This is my face. And I'm Oliver Kasich, so a lie. For better or worse, I'm the District Emergency Coordinator for the Aries LX Northeast District here in Los Angeles. And I also happen to be the ARC-IM Coordinator. After, of course, Andy K3CAQ, whom you meet in a little bit, got the whole ball rolling. Um, for us, this was supposed to be a much smaller affair. But, you know, Andy reached out um, with Ventura, Aries, ACS, and said, hey, what are you guys doing for ShakeOut? And next thing you know, we put together this this project and it turned out a lot of fun. If you want to, you can learn more about me by scanning the QR code. It'll take you to my QRZ. And that picture actually was taken last week during ShakeOut um, at a USGS symposium up in Moffett Field in San Francisco, right? Uh, if we get to it, I'll show you the picture where Tron and I were at 1017 dropping, covering and holding on, all right? Well, what's the problem with earthquakes? Well, here's a ring of fire, and it kind of shows you where um, most of the global large earthquakes were between 1900 and 2013. This is a USGS graphic. And you can see that <coughs> here in New Zealand, very active, this kind of this entire area going up to Japan, past Korea, right? Um, Kamchatka up here, Alaska, then coming down. Um, all along the Canadian U.S. coast and then all the way to um, South America. Chile is uh, very, very active. And that's part of the reason why ShakeOut is such a big deal in all of these areas. Of course, our friends in Hawaii, who um, will also play a starring role tonight, are very effective. Although in their case, very often it's mostly uh, volcano based. But, you know, uh, that's you live on an island, right? So ShakeOut was on October 17th, 2024. Don't freak out. That was the, you know, ShakeOut, don't freak out. I like that. That was a motto this year. Um, quick show of hands, how many of you registered your organizations with Sh on shakeout.org? Just wanted to see. All right, couple. <clears throat> One of the nice things, <clears throat> excuse me. One of the nice things um, by registering, and again, it was completely voluntary. One of the nice things is you do get a certificate. I'll show you what one looks like. And we actually sent out uh, the certificate yet you could fill out as part of the ARC-IM particip uh, participation. So if you participate in ARC-IM, you should have access to this too. Shakeout.org is where the world's largest earthquake drill is being managed and messaged at. Um, registrants for 2024 were 58.3 million registered uh, participants worldwide. That's a big number. In the US, it was about 19.8 million. And if you look at the actual numbers, it's usually the schools that make up the bulk of this. But 19.8 million registered to participate. And what does that mean? That means um, at 1017, you drop cover hold on. Some people do, um, that's all they do. Some people do tabletop exercises. Some groups do functional exercises. Some people do full-fledged exercises, right? So those are your options. And the volunteer radio groups, which are a separate section there, um, registered 5,803 people, right? So just keep that in mind. Um, we're dropping the bucket, but we're a very loud drop in the bucket. And so that's a good thing. So drop cover hold on, of course, this is a whole community effort. Um, everybody's invited to participate according to how their physical abilities are. Um, if you're getting to my age, you realize getting down um, on the floor and getting up is something you need to practice more um, so not to lose it. 
So I'm always happy when I get to practice this, right? This is a certificate participation you get um, when you participate, in this case, the Great California Shakeout. And we'll talk a little bit how that's slightly different. But it looks kind of cool, and it's something that you can share with your surfed agency, right? Um, in our case, we fill in the name of the organization, but you could certainly fill in your personal name if you participated as a individual. But you can also see in California, the main sponsoring agencies are Cal OES, the California Office of Emergency Services, um, NEHRP, the National Earthquake Hazards Program, and Tron's going to correct me on that. And of course, the Earthquake Country Alliance with Mark Benthi and the executive director. So what is the Earthquake Country Alliance, ECA? ECA is a public-private grassroots partnership. And that's really important to understand that it's public-private grassroots partnership, right? But the idea here is this is not centrally organized. This is organized by the neighborhoods, by schools, by groups like us, like all of our groups, uh, and then a combination of groups. But it's really grassroots effort across, I mean, who wants to manage 58 million people, right? The point here is it's fun to manage this, get to know your partners. In our case, it was fun to, to work with our partners in Southern California, all over as well across the world and have a great time with us, make it a fun experience. Um, Shakeout was created by ECA in 2008 in Southern California. It does, ECA does coordinate the California participation and it coordinates the global messaging. And of course, the national partners and sponsors, NEHR, right, the National Earthquake Hazards Program. SCEC is the Statewide California Earthquake Center. NSF is the National Science Foundation in the US. USC is the University of Southern California. USGS is the United States um, Geological Survey, as many of you know. Um, Ready.gov is one of those functions. And of course, the Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA. Those are the national sponsors and partners. Just keep in mind that each shakeout region may have additional or different sponsors. I just showed you California has Cal OES as part of that. They work closely with FEMA to make this work. But the point here is partnership. So as we're going through this, Think about partnerships. Here are the different shakeout regions. I'll just give you a moment to um, take that in. It's a lot. The thing to take away here is <clears throat> you have in the U.S. multi-state regions, central U.S., northeast, southeast, and upper Midwest, where they combined a number of um, states. You have in Canada provinces that participate as their own shakeout regions, British Columbia, Quebec, um, Yukon, and entire countries like Japan and New Zealand. Right now, uh, you will see some discrepancy between the numbers on the different boards when we go through the map because New Zealand is currently having another shakeout exercise and they will have another one in two weeks. And of course, there are, United, uh, there are US states and territories that have their own shakeout region like Alaska, Arizona, California, pretty much everybody who's on that ring of fire I showed you earlier, minus Colorado right now. But the point is they have their own shake out there as well. So keep that in mind, Puerto Rico is super active in this and we'll show that in a little while as well. Shakeout is a preparedness drill. And I wanna say a special thank you to Jason and Rudy who um, lent us this picture or sent us this picture um, to share. And what they did here is they set up in Rudy's neighborhood this year, last year was in Jason's, and people came by and engaged with them and told them a little bit about preparedness in general, amateur radio and how it can help, and gave us gave out good information. So they used ShakeOut as a general preparedness event. Sometimes people ask me, well, in my area, we don't have any earthquakes. Should I still participate? And the answer is always yes, because an earthquake, just like a zombie apocalypse, and in Northeast right now, October is zombie month. So all our exercises minus shakeout are built around zombies, right? Do we expect there to be a lot of zombie attacks? No. Is it fun to play with because we're doing the same things as we were doing a shakeout, as we're doing in earthquakes, as we're doing in landslides, fire? We do communications. So we use this as a drill, regardless of whether the event happens here or not. Um, one of our 
radio operators suggest that we should do a snowstorm in Southern California. You know what? Maybe we'll do that as an exercise, just as a thought experiment. You know, what would we have to do to do that, right? And so the point here is take every opportunity to practice, regardless of how likely this is, because as communicators, our goals are always the same. There was communication. Now there's a donut hole. There's no communication. We step in to bridge that gap until commercial and agency communications can be reestablished. That's the goal, regardless of what else we do. So please, we encourage you, and you don't have to do shakeup. In October, you can do it any type of year. Um, last year, our Southern California groups had um, shakeout in June. We'll probably do that next year again as kind of a part of an exercise, maybe a more coordinated exercise. And so, again, drill as often as you can. Practice. Challenge your operators because you want to have fun when you're trying things. Because if you do this for real, it won't be fun. It'll be hard work. And you want to dip into that well of good feeling that you built up during these drills and exercises, right? So again, thank you, Jason and Rudy. I'll now make another appearance. The Amateur Radio Community Intensity Map was born out of a cooperation, and we'll show you who cooperated in a, in a moment, but it was a map for hams by hams. What we wanted to show with that is you don't have to wait for an agency to feed you information. You can build this yourself with tools that you already have. And so the primary objective here was to map the did you fill it reports um, with a CC of shakeout, of course, in near real time. That was important for two reasons. One, I thought it would be very satisfying to operators to see their reports pop up in near real time, right? Especially color-coded reports. Because it's different if it's just a blue balloon popping up or if it's like, oh, that's actually what I reported, great. Um, great confirmation. And two, as I said earlier, Tron and I were in San Francisco, so I had no opportunity to actually manage this. So we set it up this way and we tested it this way as well. We'll get to the tests in a moment too. But we also had a couple of secondary ob objectives, like all our exercises. One was to foster collaboration between ARIES groups in Southern California because we're a tight-knit community here. We work together, we build consensus, um, we talk with one another. And this was another example of this where, again, Andy reached out with Ventura, Aries, ACS, and then San Diego came into the fold and participated, helped with the testing. Um, our friends in San Joaquin Valley uh, joined us. And of course, IEEE participated with Andy as well. So this was already from the beginning a very collaborative effort and community building effort. The other... Um, objective was to build national, international goodwill. So we did reach out to organizations that work with us. And of course, any organization that um, reached out to us and said, we'd like to opt into the exercise, this was an opt-in exercise, <clears throat> was welcome to do so. And our friends in Germany, Norway, and New Zealand um, opted in as did dozens of groups around the United States and some in Canada too. So we're super excited about this. And of course, we wanted to identify gaps and improvements in the data handling. And we talked a little bit about that before the presentation. Here are the ARC-IM project partners, Aries LX Northeast with yours truly, Ventura County Aries ACS, um, a fantastic group of people. They have a really sophisticated system. I usually tell people, if you want to learn how to kind of combine Aries and auxiliary communications, um, Look at to Ventura, they do this really well. San Diego Aries, of course, has a long standing history of being very effective in the field. They support hospitals like we do and are a fantastic group to work with. Of course, Dan and the San Joaquin Valley section was instrumental in bringing Did You Feel It? the forms as all these groups were about. So they were all really super excited about this and they all were deeply involved in the testing. And then of course, IEEE move, and Andy will tell us more about that. So um, I won't steal his thunder there. But on the right-hand side, you can see a map with the counties highlighted. Um, there's LA County, Ventura County, San Diego County. Um, and of course, here to the north are the counties associated with um, San Joaquin Valley section. So thank you so much. But 
We also had RKM national and international supporters. People who reached out, as I said, from all over, including Hawaii Aries, always, um, again, they reached out almost immediately and said, well, what can we do to have fun? Um, the Winling Treff is, an, is a group that meets every Monday. <coughs> at. Um, it's affiliated with the DRC, which is the German version of the ARRL. And they talk about Winlink topics, get uh, new Winlink um, people excited. I do have to say special thanks to Roland DG1GHR, who sent single-handedly over 40 test reports to make sure that we could handle all that data um, from different locations. He traveled around, some he did virtually. He included French positions because where he lives is close to the French border. So it was really cool. Of course, the Winlink net. Um, OE that's affiliated with the Austrian ARRL, the OEVSV, and then the New Zealand AREC, Amateur Radio Emergency. Um, I think Corporation. I don't know. I need to look up the C again. Cor corporation. No, no. Anyways, the point there is a fantastic group to work with. Nigel and I work together to kind of make this happen. I may get a chance to show you the board that we made just for them um, in the New Zealand colors. It looks awesome. Uh, the Kentucky Winlink Net, of course, Roland, always fantastic to work with. Um, NRRL um, Oslo Group and the NRRL is the ARRL for Norway, right, Finn? Okay, there you go. And they've been super active. And again, this made me super happy. And I think there was a little competition going on there between the Germans and the Norwegians as to who can put... But I mean, on a per person basis or per hundred thousand, I think Norway really took the crown there. I think that's <laughs> to 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 say this, right? Um, Whatcom County ACS always been a big supporter of what we've done. Um, Walnut Creek CERT participated, Garland Races, um, parading in the Philippines, and Monrovia CERT. There were a lot of groups, my neighbor, you know, met my neighborhood CERT groups that participated. I groups in California in Arizona reach out. And just want some clarification and they came through tremendously so thank you so much um quick show of what the lx northeast timeline i don't know is lou here ac6ls all right no all right i guess he didn't make it so here was the aries lx northeast timeline at 10 17 on 10 17 drop cover hold on we actually asked people to do that and you can see here um jason and rudy um did this well, I have a picture of Tron and me, but really what you see there is us looking at the camera from up, so you can't really see us doing this, but they have a perfect picture. So thank you again, Jason, for um, participating and making this happen. And then uh, around 1025, there was a vo voice net and David KK68 and Lou AC6LS invited Groups from all over the Southland, San Diego Aries participated, Long Beach Aries participated, Culver City Aries participated, the Red Cross participated, many other groups. There were only 50 check-ins on the voice net and people were invited to send a USGS, did you feel it, with a CC to shake out. And then by 1045, pretty much everybody could see their um, information mapped here in the, map, in the life mapping. So that was a lot of fun. And of course, IEEE MOVE, the radio club um, participated, and not only that, they were also on deployment, and Andy's going to tell us more about that. Go ahead, Andy. Thanks for the introduction, Oliver. Actually, I don't know if you can see my, my background, but uh, this is in one of Ventura County's uh, tube tents, I guess you call them, at a, uh, uh, a field day a few years ago. Um, so in my many, many warm memories of when I was living there in Ventura. Um, so I'm a member, um, actually still of, of uh, Ventura and a club out there, but uh, my primary reason for being here tonight is as the chair of the IEEE MOVE Radio Club. So we're uh, a little bit unusual in that we are distributed across the U.S. We have a few international members, but mostly within the U.S. Um, we um, And so... Uh, you know, rather than being in a single geographic area. So the, the club's call sign, W4MOV, is registered in uh, North Carolina. So that's where we were the southeastern um, uh, shakeout. 
And we got, we actually, we doubled our reports this year. Uh, we Last year we were four, so we're eight. Well, actually eight. And then we had one, which was a, 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 a go, oh, sorry, a PAT issue. And then unfortunately we had one other one, which uh, Ross in Seattle didn't, didn't uh, for some reason he tested okay, but on the day it didn't work out. But that would have been Seattle to Puerto Rico. We have a very active group in Puerto Rico. They have many issues to deal with it. So they're, they're quite active. So who are the, the Move Radio Club? Well, we're I members who are um, uh, radio amateurs and we support the IEEE MOVE project. What that is, is um, it's a uh, first off a disaster relief and secondly a STEM outreach um, uh, activity that the IEEE uh, sponsors. And while we were doing the, the shakeout and actually we were kind of worried, right, can we do this? Because we knew that uh, Milton was coming through and can we use HF? And then fortunately things calmed down. But while this was going on, uh, we actually had um, uh, three trucks deployed, uh, move one and move two. Uh, we deployed uh, near Asheville, North Carolina. The top picture there, the, the white one is move one, the black one is move two. Um, move two is still there. Um, it's going to Creston, I think, uh, North Carolina tomorrow. Uh, move one's back uh, for some repairs. And then move three is down in uh, in um, uh, Tamp the Tampa area helping the Red Cross. So we deploy principally with the Red Cross. Uh, for some reason, about 80% of the crew members are, radi are radio amateurs. Don't know why, but they are. And um, so what does that mean? Well, we actually use DMR to support them. Uh, we have people all over the country who come in and, and act as net monitors. So we provide overwatch to the crews. We also use Google Chat, which helps because sometimes when you're, you're running through uh, Starlink to get, to get your backhaul, things don't always work out so well. Uh, you know, uh, bandwidth can be restricted. Uh, but I just wanted to to shout out to uh, to the members who participated in the shakeout, but also deployed, and those that were supporting them during this time. So um, it's one of those things, ham radio in action, uh, to support uh, disaster relief. And thanks again for setting this up, Oliver. I uh, really love uh, collaborating with uh, the group there in uh, LAX Northeast. Hey, Oliver, I think you're on mute. Okay, let's try this again. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much, Andy, um, but both for letting me know about mute but, uh, and for the presentation and also for getting the um, ball rolling on this. And I think that was the inspiration for ARC IM and kind of um, the rebranding and making sure everybody is, is welcome. So I really appreciate everything you're doing with the um, IEEE MOVE. And this is all volunteers, right, who participate in this. So it's really well done. Thank you. All right, a couple of ARC-IM takeaways before we go into the actual map. Um, first off, national international collaboration rocks. All right, um, you are all fantastic. Um, as people reached out, some were a little shy about it, some were really forward about it, but everybody said once they had clear direction, I think this helped. I think it helped that we had one website um, where everybody could go and get their information. That really was a, was a positive thing there. Uh, another thing that we learned from this, it's best if the mapping parameter information is in the form data. And if we get a chance, I'll show you what, what that means in terms of the welfare form that we are just developing. So we did learn a lot of lessons from this. And again, um, there may be an issue with Winlink exporting pattern radio mail messages to CSV. Uh, as I said, we did a com uh, we did a comparison between the form three zero nine com log and the did you feel it reports, and we're actually about twenty five reports more higher than are shown on the map because Pat and radio mail messages, including two of my own sent with radio mail, um, when LinkedIn export to the CSV. Why that is. I don't know. Right now, we're just gathering the evidence and making sure that we have some data, right? But this is what this is all about. And again, this is about the community. This is also here to show you, and we'll show you a couple of tricks um, later too, how you can do this offline if you needed to. Um, but to empower you to really 
get data, use it locally and inform your partners, both whether it's neighborhood groups, whether it's EOCs, whether it's fire departments, hospitals, whatever you work with, right? And if it's just your neighbor and just, right? We do this for our neighborhoods, our families. This is the primary reason. But if those are the people you share the information with, you're already improving everybody's life because there's nothing worse than being in a disaster, being scared and not knowing what's going on, right? All right, let's start the ARC IM life demonstration discussion. Um, do we have any questions so far before we go into that? All right, not hearing anything, cool. Let me first go on how the ARC IM started. Um, let me just show you this real quick. This is what we call now the amateur, it used to be LAX Northeast um, intensity map, but now we're calling it the amateur radio community intensity map. And that's where we actually map the did you feel it reports for real events for our area. So what you can do here is, again, these are real earthquakes. For example, on October 6th, we had, we had an earthquake. Oh, you can click on this, just show the, only this one. And then you actually can get where the earthquake was, we're kind of merging, blending that data, and then the reports. In this case, none of us here felt it, but you can see by all the reports that people send that people actually make an effort to make sure that this is this is from um, the beginning of the year. This, by the way, is Northridge, right? <laughs> That's a historical earthquake. But from the beginning of the year, we've been tracking this. And for those of you living in Southern California, you know that we've had more earthquakes this year than in the last um, previous 10 years around this time. And so this is one of those um, ways in which we engage with the community, make it a good habit. You want to have a positive habit towards communication. But this is how this started. On this, we built the Arc IM. And you may notice I actually changed the layout a little bit to make it easier to present tonight as well. For those of you wondering what this is up here on the right, this is called the Earth flag. I found that out completely by accident. I like that to have a planet Earth flag, right? Um, when we go to Mars, maybe a little planet and Earth flag. How cool would that be? And so right now, did you feel it? Shake up reports is at 574. You'll see on the other um, plates, it's 556. That was um, as of this afternoon. But then, um, as I said, New Zealand brought new reports and and for those of you who may not be familiar how to navigate this some of this may be new let me know if you have questions let me know how you used it but if you haven't used it yet i do want to encourage you to do that let's look at a couple of areas here we'll talk about the the big participants in their own panels but i do want to say i was super thrilled at this participation here um, on the east coast this is not necessarily earthquake country. I mean, there's a new Madrid fault here, but the last earthquake there was ages ago. So super excited that people, especially in the harder hit areas of North Carolina, you know, Tennessee participated. It was super exciting because it also makes me think that some people took this opportunity to test their equipment, make sure they have this communication capability there, regardless of whether it was HF, VHF, um, Arden, or Starlink, whatever you have to get the message through. Um, strong group here in Texas, Florida participated, um, really a cluster here in Michigan. I mean, they did, I mean, look at how many reports that they put together. It's just really absolutely amazing in, in, in the Detroit area. So we're super thrilled about that as well. Um, strong participation as usual here in this great state of Washington. They have their own shakeout, right? So you can hear, see here the Seattle area as well as here up by the border. Fantastic group. Then Oregon, and again, these are the ring of fire areas where you have a lot of participation. And we'll talk about uh, we'll talk about California in a little bit on its own panel, right? Internationally, also Hawaii, traditionally very strong participation all across. I got one email from a Hawaiian station that almost brought me to tears because he said, you know, I never realized how many of my radio buddies live close to me and how other islands don't have as many people um, close to them. So this was a great learning experience. 
So that was part of why we wanted to do this, that you can actually zoom in. Let's say you live in, in Hilo and you don't know who that person is. You could actually click on them, right? And find out information, um, click on the QRZ lookup, and that'll take you right to their um, QRZ if you're logged in, right? If you're not logged in, you're not But the idea there was to create community to support community. I also want to point out that you can print all of this up, right? Um, you can take screenshots of this. Let me go back into the presentation mode. You can um, take screenshots of this. You can, of course, reset the map by right mouse clicking. And here's another thing. If you want to do your own analytics, right mouse click and export and all everything you can see here, you can export into a spreadsheet too. The nice thing about amateur radio, um, it is public information. So that makes life a lot easier. Of course, you can say, listen, who reported eights? You can click on the eight here and that'll highlight all the reports with eight. If you want to look at only the sevens, you can do that. If you want to say, listen, I want to see everything higher than a six, you can click on six, hold down the control key, seven and eight and nine, if you wanted to see those two. And that shows you all the earthquakes greater than six, right? So there's a lot of fun in doing that. Um, of course, you can always reset, right mouse click, reset. And then we can do form. Marshall, I think we wanted to check yours, right? K06FBJ? That's correct, Oliver. All right. Kilo, Oscar, six, Foxtrot, Bravo, Juliet. And you can see we can't find it. So I don't know what's going on there. We'll look for it later. But you can see if you do a partial KO, you can actually see everybody who has a KO in their report. But see, Marshall, it's a good thing we checked and we'll follow up on that, of course. Thanks, and appreciate it. Yeah, and that's part of what we're doing and why we're doing this. So this is a whole lot of fun, right? And I'll make a note of that right now as we're doing this. All right. Um, does anybody else want, want to look that up? By the way, if you look, for example, um, W6 is usually very popular. If you wanted to see, oops, if you wanted, whoop, what am I doing here? Wrong one. <laughs> We're fast forwarding, hold on. Bottom here, you can see the different pages. Shake up, so let's go back here. Um, if you wanted to see the different ones here, you could do W6, and I'll show you everything with a W6 um, in the name there. So it's actually quite a lot of fun to, to work with that. The other thing you can do, you can search comments. So if you're, let's say, Hawaii Aries, they instructed, oops, what are you doing? Hawaii Aries instructed all their people to add HE Aries in the comments. So you click on that, you hit enter that, you hit enter, and they see all the stations that put Hawaii Aries in the comments. And that's something that they asked for. It took me a little while to figure out the programming of that, but it totally works, right? So those are all the stations that put Hawaii Aries in their call. And IEEE was also very good about putting that in there. So let's zoom out. And you can see all the stations that put IEEE. And of course, as Andy pointed out, Puerto Rico, very heavily influenced by IEEE. And you can see all the stations that put IEEE into their comments. How cool is that? Go Puerto Rico. I think you guys really rocked this, you know? So outstanding. Thank you so much. Again, if you want to reset that, you can usually... Um... Thank you, Oliver. Yeah. So if... if... I may have a, a word here. Yeah, great. So uh, this is Frank. I'm from the Puerto Rico Digital Operating Group. So I was like, I was like, yeah, I mean, we've been participating. We're a small group of digital operators. And uh, we were, I mean, we have been participating in ShakeOut for many years. And this year we were looking for what to do, what to do different. And then I noticed that the EEEE move was working in this exercise with a partnership with your team. And I, I met uh, Florencio from the EEEE Move Puerto Rico team in last A, uh, A -R -R -L field day. Mm -hmm. So I asked Florencio, hey, can we do this together here in Puerto Rico? And he said, oh, why not? So let's put some instruction together and practice and do this uh, 
with a with a larger team. So thank you, Florencio, for the uh, for letting us uh, collaborate in this exercise, and thank you to everyone. Well, thank you, Frank. This is exactly what this exercise was supposed to do. This kind of bring the communities together, maybe get na neighbors together. Florence, you, you, you unmuted. Go ahead and, and, and comment. Oh, I think you need to adjust your you, you need to adjust your microphone. One. There's no okay, audio. Thank you. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, good. Yes. And the 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 radio side of of moving Puerto Rico is it, it's rather small. Uh, and we have uh, this collaboration with this group here in Puerto Rico that it's well established, uh, KP4 DOG, uh, PR, PR Dog, it's their acronym. Uh, and they ask us to that, have that collaboration. I talked to Andy and, and it fits fits very well because it's when, when we have an event, it, it's not a group, it's the, the whole area that it's impacted. So that represents a very good effort. They help us on the on the communication via um, media, and, and we got a very good result. So, so that, that adds up to what uh, both from a state, from a US perspective, IEEE was able to account, uh, and also from, from the local Puerto Rico perspective. So, so it, it's very good, very good experience. Happy to hear that. And let me let me say this again. Um, there's nothing small about your participation. I think you guys rock this. So um, it's just these yeah. things, me personally, extremely happy because I, I lived in Florida for 10 years. And so I have a healthy respect for hurricanes and I have a healthy respect for the amazing um, collaboration and cooperation that uh, pretty much the entire Caribbean has when it comes to in response emergency response disaster response and you guys are living proof of this so this is something and again i encourage you to take screenshots you can right, right mouse click download the page as a pdf and make that part of your websites make that part this is something to be really really proud of um and so thank you so much for 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 jumping in head first and and making this such a fun experience for everybody outstanding so let's, and again, you can show everybody on the island. In fact, you know, we've got here British Virgin Islands, right? Um, so this is, you play with the maps, make them your own. The reason these maps are there for you, the community, to tell your story. And I hope that, that really, that we're bringing that out tonight, right? All right, let's move on to this page um, was, and this is, slightly different um way of doing that not sure this is updating but um here we divided it up by country and this is an extra i had to I had to farm this out this is a separate data set here where we are actually geocoding the latitude and longitude but you can see um costa rica participated how cool is that um new zealand lots of um stations here philippines puerto rico again we saw that here 20 and again you can click on this and you can see the data and just um, zoom in here and you can get that information right there. And again, you can always bring everything back up here. Germany, of course, and Switzerland, one that was kind of fun. And of course, we had our friends in Norway. And we'll talk about that um, when we get to the European page as well. So I think there was a, a little bit of a, a conversation about can you submit more than one report? Our friends at ETO had a separate exercise um, that was coordinated differently. But when that came out and created a little bit of confusion because it seemed at odds with our instructions, um, they and us worked together really quickly to adjust the messaging and make sure that everybody could send one or more reports to participate in either um, exercise because as I said, we want this to be a whole community thing. We want this to be fun for everybody, right? And so they were super to work with. Um, we have them here by by zip uh, by by state, right? Not every area keys like that or by county and by zip and of course date. 
uh, zip code was, this was just something we were playing around with. How much data do we actually need? Are we going to do this in the future? Probably not, because I think we can geofence it different ways. But this was a great learning experience for everybody. Um, Shakeout reports from California. Of course, California with 40 million people, the largest state, 164. That's quite a lot. And you can see, of course, here the county map makes total sense. You can click on these maps and see there were 59 reports from L.A. County, um, San Benito County. Um, there was one county up here that took me totally by surprise. Contra Costa had six, right? There was a lot of Walnut Creek in that area that participated. And where it was, yeah, so it was a whole lot of fun. San Luis Obispo, very active in this. Kern County, where Dennis is, very active also in the testing. And let me stress this again, without the testing, we wouldn't have been able to do any of this. The test reports really helped us make sure this is a robust system. So thank you so much. Ventura County, of course, 23. Always very active. San Diego County with 25, super active. They made it a weekly exercise to participate there as well. And then, of course, our friends from Hawaii. Um, that was kind of interesting because some stations on the mainland also identified as Hawaii Aries. So they weren't um, counted in this um, count, obviously. But that was nice when having the search function built in. And then of course we put one in for the US because first I did the European one and then I thought if I don't put in one for the US, people are going to say, well, why did you have Europe and not the US, right? But you can see there aren't a lot of um, dark spots here. Pretty much almost every state here participated. And the reason why Puerto Rico isn't highlighted here is because Puerto Rico, um, according to Google, is its own section, right? So you have your own um, country code, which is um, fantastic. So you can see California, of course, being the most popular state, super active. And of course, our friends here in Oregon did really well, Washington, Hawaii. Um, so this, I think, was a lot of fun to actually visualize how broad the participation here was and how few areas um, didn't participate. So that was really cool. Any takeaways anyone wants to share so far? All right. Now, here this is a project near and dear to my heart, right? Um, this was fun because, as I said, the Windlink Treff was very supportive of a whole project from the get-go and did a fantastic job with um, giving us a lot of reports, trial reports. And, of course, Patrick, OE1, LHP made this an exercise last week as well so you can see these austrian stations all participated and cc shakeout um the german stations participated and they had a great time with it we'll talk about that and of course finn's group around oslo did fantastic and by the way i put dach stands for germany austria switzerland right these are the iso codes the two digit iso codes and i know um, for noria Am I pronouncing that right, Finn? No, I'm not. <laughs> Finn, um, go ahead and unmute. Tell us a little bit about your experience. From old time, uh, this is, uh, in my mind, uh, the uh, car in the national uh, signs. And, so, uh, so the Dach Deutschland Austria uh, C H was Switzerland. Mm -hmm. And how did you get um, that many reports? Because you you guys had twelve reports. That's really impressive. Um, since you didn't have a lot of um, ramp up time, right? Like a week and a half. Uh, I my technique is. Uh, is um, sending cues uh, the LA messages uh, to interested people uh, through Windlink as text messages. So uh, NRL is doing it once a week uh, on ordinary email, and I I strip this down to text and can add uh, sp uh, specific Windlink interested. Uh, issues as a separate uh, message 
So that's uh, the way I got in contact with uh, the participants. Excellent. Well, thank you so much. And this was, again, this was fun. Um, and I think if we hadn't had that one um, additional German report, you definitely would have either um, been ahead of the, the Germans or the, you know, at least um, equal. So I think there was one discrepancy. So well, well done there. And it was fun. I, I, had a, I had a great time. By the way, they had an earthquake in Berlin, in Erd, uh, south of Berlin, uh, in Brandenburg, actually. Um, in early October, I took everybody by surprise. So <laughs> they thought this was very apropos. Uh, New Zealand, of course, um, very active. And I'll show you the New Zealand um, panel in a moment. Do we have anybody from New Zealand here t tonight? No, I guess they're active. All right. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you is kind of the leaderboard, so to speak. And you can totally play with this if you want to, right? If you only wanted to see New Zealand, you can actually see Auckland, Wellington, Northland, Southland, and you can see where all their reports are coming from. Um, same thing for, again, Finnis here. So I want to show you this with Norway. Um, I'm totally going to butcher these names. Aukus, who's, who's Telemark, Oslo, that, that one I can get, Westfold, um, Buskavit, so you can kind of see where people are um, located. And sometimes it even does it by county. And in this case, what you can do is just move the map over. And if there is a way to see the county, again, we invite you to um, kind of zoom in, take screenshots, download the page as a PDF. You're welcome to do that. And as always, you could, if you wanted to see Puerto Rico and the United States, you can hold your control key and you can show both of them, right? I hope that makes that makes somewhat sense, right? And I think Pueblo Viejo is in Puerto Rico, right? Right. All right. So play with this. This is your data, your information. We really appreciate that. Um, do any of you have any comments? Because this is the end of this pres uh, of this part of the presentation. Do you have any? comments or questions about this before we go on to the next part. It's so hey, quiet. Hey Oliver, this is this is Andy again. This is great. Uh I I really hadn't had chance to to play much with the the tool. Just did a few screen grabs and stuff. I see there's so much more we can get out of it. So thanks for setting this up. We'll uh, definitely make use of this in the future. My pleasure. And uh, the other thing I wanted to show you, Andy, thanks that you're bringing this up. And we sent out one report earlier, but you can click up here and then you can click on present to make it full screen. And you do have the option sometimes to actually download the whole report. So you download everything, right? So just keep that in mind as a little thank you for all of you participating. This is your data. This shows that you participated. I hope all of you got your certificate. Is there anybody who didn't get your, uh, their certificate? I think other than Marshall, because I emailed it out to whoever got it on their, um, whoever we were able to map. So if you didn't get a certificate, reach out to me, right? I just wanted to show you this because this was at 28 earlier this morning. You can see this kind of happening, the exercise when they started right here today. And then all these reports coming in. So this is their second shakeout today. And I do have to, I, okay, I do have to brag. These are the New Zealand um, national colors. And I think it just looks awesome. The black, red, and the white. Come on, guys. Seriously, that just looks fantastic, right? So, yeah, but you can see the exercise is ongoing here. How cool is that? So live data. And then as a little bonus here, I wanted to show you this. For those of you who haven't seen this yet, this is the USGS ShakeOut 2024 scenario. And when they sent this out, they said, please make sure that you show them that you can click on this map. And this shows, and let me just go back one, they received a total of 1,657 responses. So ArcIM alone accounted for a third of those. So thank you so much um, to all of the, you who participated. But you can click on that. And I'll show you where you can get the information later. Um, and then you can go in and you can see also the reports that went in via radio mail. You can see the reports. Um, Dennis, you said, where were you when you sent in your radio 
meal report? I was just uh, just east of Bakersfield in the town of Lamont, so south of where you are there, and it's not sh it didn't show up. Um, Is it that's Bakersfield? Uh, that's Richard and uh, Patrick there. They showed up, but I'd be kind of down on Highway 58, which is down below that, heading off. And uh, you can see where Lamont is there, right below. So, right yeah, it did not show up on there, unfortunately. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's, well, something, we, that's something we can address. But I do want to um, really encourage you to look at that map and kind of see the map data again. They put this information together here, and you can see all the different parts at Detroit area. And I do want to show you um, Puerto Rico again, because I think it makes for a fantastic comparison. And you can print, take a screen grab of this and then compare it to the ArcIM as well. We encourage you to do that and get a sense of this is what the agency saw and this is what we had with the CC. Remember, ArcIM only mapped what, what had a CC of ShakeOut. And then, of course, our friends here in Europe. Let me show you this. Norway. I don't know, um, Finn, when was the last time you saw um, your self mapped on a USGS map? You're still muted. No, I, I've never seen it. Uh, the uh, This before now all right well i hope this is something you can sh uh, share with your friends at nrl and hope hopefully next year um even increase participation how cool would that be all right i could, I could try <laughs> absolutely <laughs> so well it's worth a try right so yeah i just want you to really play with this and i thought because we did have the the easy way of getting to this is via the lax and i'll show you this in a moment laxnortheast.org dashboards shakeout. That's where we have all the information. We actually added that information here at the bottom here as well. So we'll talk about these maps in a moment, but here's the map. And you can go to the link to the website I just showed you, or you can click on the map and that brings up that world map right there. I think that makes it easier to have it all in one place. Mm -hmm. Yeah? All right. So we want to make it easy for you. So again, LAX Northeast forward uh, dot org dashboard shakeout. You can also Google LAX Northeast shakeout or ARC IM shakeout. It'll all get you to this web page here. And in wrapping up here, a couple of other things I wanted to show you. What we did with ArcIM was total overkill. Nobody has to do this, right? This was born out of me being really worried about not being around and trying to automate everything. But you can do this manually too. And here we've got a map, same data, same information um, on mymaps.google.com. Everybody can use that. It's easy to use. You can just load the information in, set your headers. Um, you can see the details of everybody here. You can click on people. For those of you who participate in ETO exercises, you will have a really good sense of what information is there, right? And of course, you can always um, click on that, and that'll actually show you the map itself, right? And you can see the same. And I'll, I'll, I'll use Puerto Rico because this is... Um, it's just super to show that the information looks the same. In this case, I set the colors, but you can certainly do that um, yourself, adjust for different kinds of events. And I do encourage you, if you do have internet, to make this a habit. But what if you don't have internet, right? I think many of you are probably thinking, well, this is great, but <laughs> what if I'm in that donut hole, that data donut hole? Well, there's another option. And that's, in this case, we're using Pinpoint APRS. I used the data, just brought it down in a um, spreadsheet locally. You know, the all the information is collected locally, um, output as a CSV. You open it in a spreadsheet. You enter the forward slash, whatever the number is, and you can make a little text join or concatenate and put those two together and then you save it. You need a third-party program. If you're interested, I can tell you which one. But use a third-party program to create a GPX file, right? 
And you can load that into pretty much any APRS software, including Pinpoint APRS, which is what we use in LAX Northeast. And that gives you a map like this. And you, I don't have Pinpoint APRS, so it can zoom for you, but this is what it looks like right here. And you can see, you can actually, the colors don't match 100%, but you can kind of tell where the problem areas are if you were zooming in. And I think that's really powerful to have that data be able to show this. By the way, Pinpoint APRS in LA County is a big deal because we use it for hospital service levels. So, and it, the colors there match. So whenever we have a major exercise like the upcoming Mercy in November, we usually have our friends from the county come out and they check on this about once every hour just to get a sense of how much does the information on the APRS match what we're seeing on the insight on the computer. They're concerned about, again, this congruity of data. And that's why we're um, working on this and that's why we're having fun with this. But you can kind of, it's kind of cool to pull all of this up in um, APRS. Again, this is all offline, so you could certainly do it offline if you wanted to. Any questions about that? No? Was this too much information or was this just like... Well, it's two minutes to seven. Um, I do want to say thank you so much to all of you who participated in this amazing um, adventure that was the Amateur Radio Community Intensity Map. I had a fun time. I learned a lot in this process. I had a fun time doing this. I hope you had a fun time participating. Um, do you want to share any of your experiences during ShakeOut that you think other people might be um, interested in or things that you thought worked out well? Jason, you have your hand up. Go ahead. I do, and I have an observation about it. It was a great exercise, and it was encouraging to have so many people participate in the voice uh, the, the voice check-in. It, it shows a lot about other people in different counties getting involved in uh, practicing for emergencies. The other component that Rudy and I put together was that public, that PR component where we talked to the public about being prepared. And we also tried to uh, recruit radio operators as well. We had our gear all set up. And the interesting thing about it is that, of course, people in Southern California and California are aware of earthquakes, but a lot of them had real real questions about how to store water, what kind of food uh, they should store. And, and one person didn't want to rotate cans of chili all the time. And we, we had a few suggestions. So the public outreach component is really important, not only to, to, to recruit more radio operators, but just to get a feel of what the public was into, what they know and what they don't know. And they really appreciated our, our work. Thank you so much, Jason. And you guys were out there all day long. You participated in radio nets. You sent it, you feel it with your go kits. And I think that really shows your commitment, but it also demonstrates to people that it can be done. It can be done in a fun way. There is nothing worse than panicking people. You can't scare people into action. You have to support people in their quest to become more resilient. And that's really what we're trying to do here. Dan, um, you have your hand up. Go ahead. So uh, does this map have a future that's going to require a name change from intensity map to amateur radio community, other things mapped, where the full text of a message or a form uh, could be attached to the colorful dots? Well, I'm happy you're asking. Yes, it does. So let me <laughs> let me share uh, my screen again, and I'll, I'll show you what that future might look like. Uh, well, thank you so much, um, Dan, for the cue. One of the things we've been working on, and this came out of listening to the traffic um, during Hurricane Helena, is this, the Welfare Bulletin Board. And I think, Dan, that's where you're alluding to, right? Yeah. So the idea behind yeah, this... Yes and, yes, and others, not restricted to. Well, one of the things that I want to point out is, in this case, I used 
Luca Studio, but these business intelligence software packages, this is what these things are. Um, Luca Studio, Tableau, um, what's the Microsoft is something BI. I always get confused. Um, but I've used Tableau before and I've used Luca Studio. They're extremely flexible. So while we were in the Bay Area, just to give you an example, the Oakland Hills fire broke out and we were only nine miles away. So we were kind of concerned and we were paying attention to what was happening. And the way that the TV station tracked the road closures and the fire spread was with Luca Studio because I recognized what that looked like. So it is very flexible. But the idea here is, yeah, and this doesn't have to be me. Anybody can learn how to do that. There are tons of um, courses on YouTube, um, online courses, if you want to do something more focused, you can certainly do that. In this case, we, as I showed you earlier, this originally came out of our dashboard. I can show you the other dashboards if you're interested. But this came out of the original idea was we wanted to understand how our agencies look at our data, right? And the only way we understand that if we understand their process. And if you know anything about California emergency management, a lot of it is about dashboards, building dashboards, getting the information quickly, understanding what the trends are. So that's where this idea of building our own dashboards came from. Right. And here, the welfare bulletin board um, that Dan alluded to, and we'll show you a couple of other iterations. The idea here is that you have a form, you fill out the form, it's already pre filled to tactical address welfare. And it asks a couple of questions, and then you can get this information posted to this website, and you can send somebody to lxnotheast.org welfare and inform them of what your situation is. What does it do? It does. Two things. One, it frees up circuit capacity because uh, Winlink message is substantially smaller than voice traffic. And for those of you who listen during Helene, uh, uh, Hurricane Helene, a lot of the traffic was how is person XYZ doing? And very often people went onto these voice repeaters and the voice repeaters had other challenges to deal with rather than welfare messages, especially since the people who called in almost always had either email or internet available. It's the people in the affected areas that didn't have that. They needed the circuit capacity. So that's where this came from, because here's the idea. You could, in this case, you know, Evan, I love Evan because he has the best messages. This is exercises. We have real events too, as an option. But here's a whole thing about, you know, um, camping. We're safe, right? He's in the state of Hawaii, city, Kohala, Gilligan's Island, the movie. That's the rest. That's that's a reference, right? So he's having fun with this, but he's trying this out. He's stress testing it. Um, it doesn't have to be for you, the radio operator. It could be in this case. Again, this is Evan who sends it, right? WH6ECG. But this could be for a neighbor, right? He gave him the name Mick Canales, right? Just to show that you could actually do this for a neighbor too and notify their friends and relatives and say, listen, because here's the other thing. We don't necessarily think of the people who might be interested in finding out how we're doing. We usually think friends, close friends and family, but there are a lot of people that we interact with that truly want to know what's going on. If they have a single point where they can go to, here are our German friends having a fun time and you can filter this just like you can filter the did you feel it in this case you know zombie attack let's see who's attacked by zombies right apparently knut blauts on bluetooth right and eric anderson and jason um are under zombie attack as i said october is zombie month in, in la so you know we're having a fun time with that um you can reset this and you could say let's do this by city Right. Can, can I, yeah, can I plant a seed, which is not everybody is going to have a sufficiently sophisticated um, uh, clientele that they're going to be able to go hither and yon on the internet. But the ability for an agency to accept these and print them um, uh, around, well, 
I mean, I, as recently as seven or eight years ago, the Red Cross and um, Mariposa County would just literally post bulletins on bulletin boards about the changes of the status of evacuations and of uh, welfare stuff like this. Um, so, I mean, I'm, I, I just, I want to plant a seed so you can keep that in mind that the end result of particularly this one could be being printed out and looked at, you know, at the bulletin boards that they scurry around town and staple over the previous stuff on the bulletin board during times when the evacuations are coming ever closer. And that um, that's a great point, Dan. And that's part of the reason why we organized it. Um, we, you and I had that conversation. That's kind of why we organized it this way, right? So you could say, I want to see everybody in Pasadena or everybody, in this case, Knut Blauzahn, right, as, as a name. And you could print this out as a PDF and then print out and post it to a bulletin board, a physical bulletin board, right? That's the idea behind that. But the technology okay. that drives this is the exact same thing as here. Let me give you another example, maybe something a little bit more um, apropos. Let's say we want to go city and we want to see everybody in Aachen Ernsbach, which is in Germany, right? And that's a lot of information. And he actually used information that they have put out to the public in the past. And you could take this information, oops, but right mouse click, download page as PDF, click on download. Again, it gives you a map of where the location there is. You can zoom the map if you want to, control zoom, right? If you want to see where that is in the greater scheme of things, open that file and that gives you that information, right? So. There are these options and you can have link backs these days, pretty much everybody in, in these evacuation centers has tablets or large screens where people can scroll to. So we try to make this as interactive as possible because this is the modern world we live in. And it starts with a WinLink form. And thank you so much to Greg, um, K KG6SJT, who developed this with us and took kind of my crazy designs and put them in a form that can actually be used. But what's revolutionary about this particular form is that we're working from the database. What does the database information have to look like to the user, right? To harmonize that. And by the way, that's a great point you're raising there too. I just wanted to bring this up. Exercise IDs, as you can see, we gave everybody the exercise idea of shakeout. There are a lot of different spellings of shakeout, right? And yeah. our friends at USGS said, this is causing us a lot of work. And so you'll see some changes coming where spaces will not be allowed anymore everything will be capitalized for exercises lowercase for actual events and those changes that we ran by our friends at usgs um just to make sure we harmonize that as well but that's also again looking from the database point of view and working backwards to make the information flow smoother and faster and while we're on this topic, we already showed you the earthquakes in SoCal. By the way, um, we still have the 2023 shakeout information. And you can kind of see this is Tableau. It's a different business intelligence software that we use to map this with. But we also have our dashboards main page. And you can see what we're doing here is we're using things like Vara Chat, And we can plot Vara Chat information pretty easily as well, right? including what the hospital status here is, the check-ins, the checkouts. We can actually here plot the different reports. Here are our WinLink check-ins. And by the way, you can always expand this if you want to see this. This was our first try at the Welfare Bulletin Board, right? The updated version you've seen already. We tried out different ways of this. Bed availability, you can track that. Anything that you can output to a CSV, you can track this way, right? I mean, 
in this case, you don't have to be an expert to kind of know you probably don't want to send any patients to Naomi Hospital, right? Because they're in status red, limited service. And again, it's not a real hospital. This is, this is all exercise data. Um, we've got a bed availability table. If you want to look at the details here, you can scroll through that. You can sort all of that, you know. How many people can accommodate adult ICU patients? You know, Marengo has 32 adult ICU. They're doing pretty well there. The filtering is really, really powerful. Field situation report, how do you put that out? And this is difficult to map, to say the least, right? But you could map it. You could say, okay, I only want to see those that have no commercial power, right? Again, I, I wouldn't organize a form this way, but you can actually um, you can actually filter this. It's a little bit harder. Humanitarian needs, by the way, is a fantastic form to filter. It's super easy to do. So that's a form that you can just output the the data. Um, this is pretty small. Let me make it a little bit larger. Oops, oops, no. There, I think that's better to see, right? Um, homes damaged, people outside, safety unknown at this time, right? You can kind of see time. You can do team ID. You can see how many shelter, how many groups need shelter, how many have an issue with food and nutrition, how many need water and sanitation help. That information is all available, right? And that makes it super easy to work with. And of course, the checkouts. But the point here I'm trying to make is you don't have to wait for an agency to make this happen. You can do this yourself. Again, Looker Studio is probably overkill for most of it. But there are options that you can use to familiarize yourself with it, you can use APRS to do a lot of this as well. So I want you to feel empowered to do that. So thank you so much, Dan, for bringing that up. Do you have any other questions or comments? All over this, Marshall. Hey, Marshall. Uh, I, I looked on that US map and, and I show up on the US map. Okay. Well, I'm looking, I'm looking at the UTM uh, coordinates that it shows on the map and what my UTM coordinates are. No, they're an exact match. Excellent. And yeah, just to, if, if you guys want to see how we manage this, I don't know, do we have the time, um, Dan, or shall I wrap it up? Oh, you're doing okay. So here, I have, to, I have to do it this route, right? Because it's actually running on another computer. So the way we actually do this, you can see all the New Zealand stations come in. Um, the way you can actually do this in Winlink is KO4FBJ, right, Marshall? Is that right? Uh, no, it's KO6FBJ. KO6, I'm sorry. KO6, thank you. And then you look at it and select the messages. But interestingly enough, um, are you sure you CC Shakeout? Well, I thought I did. Uh, I when I submitted the the form with the picture on it, mm -hmm. I I did miss one step. I I didn't click the setup button. But when I submitted the the form uh, to USGS, uh, I think I followed the instructions and and put shake out. But I I could have missed it. Yeah, I, but here, here. Marshall, here's the thing, and here's it. Here's a, you bring up a great point, and I want to, Marshall, I want to encourage you as well as everybody here. If you want to be added to the map, it's not too late. You can go into your send items, right? And oops, I'm still I still have this on. Cancel message. Send items, right? And yeah. I'll I'll just take a, a a random one, right? Um, but let's do just an act, right? As an example, find your did you feel it entry. Click on forward and then type shake out. All one word, shake out. And that's that's uh, the DFI? That's, that's the archive. Yeah, that's okay. the archive that we just went over. And then post to Outbox, and that should actually then post within an hour or so. If you want to give that a try.
Sure. But the beauty of digital, you can always resend, right? So thank you so much for giving us that opportunity to share that. So if you are not on the map, you feel you should be on the map and you didn't use PAT or radio mail, then, then please go ahead and forward your um, address to the ARC-IM. Um, you're welcome so to ask yourself now. I, I see what's wrong. Uh, I, I sent it to DF, DYFI reports and then I ccdyf5vcc.com. Okay. Uh, account. But you see, the thing there is, we troubleshot um, the issue, and I'm happy that, that there's a resolution. So please forward that, um, because we'd love to have you on the map. Will do. Thank you. Dennis, you have your hand up. Yeah, Oliver, <laughs> while, you, while you've got that up, on your messages received to shake out, would, if you just did a search on the incoming messages, um, see if you received something from me. It'd be interesting. W6DQ, of course. Oops, sorry. I, Not I can't close. Yeah. <laughs> but no cigar. <laughs> yeah, close only counts in horseshoes. Yeah. So yeah, there I, I searched for you that way when uh, you uh, got hold of me on uh, yeah. Friday interesting oh here, here's the kicker because you're not the only one here okay six oli i'm up there three times right uh-huh and here you can see that's a radio mail one because it doesn't have the source listed right that okay. didn't show up right and so it's like okay huh what's going on here so that's kind of what put us on the um on kind of the what what's the issue so we need to we need to investigate what the issue there is whether anything will be done about it is a different story right i'll, I'll be in touch with you because uh, it, it shows that you did receive something from me but it just didn't map and so be curious as to if it's because of the way the uh you know it, it like i said before it sent it as an attachment when i would look at my sent message and uh that, that seemed kind of strange to me that it, and then it didn't show up anywhere either on usgs or here so anyway yeah, the, we, at that. no it's a, it's, a, it's a great point and the other thing you can do in troubleshooting since we're doing this as an educational thing you can see number of stored reports 797 that's because that includes the um 200 exercise reports too so when andy was talking about the one station that didn't show up what i did was i went to display and map and I was curious, um, Andy, do you remember what was the call sign? WB4 something other? Uh, WB4 KSL. KSL, thank you. So I went down to the from, if I can find a sender there. Oh, there you go. WB4 KSL. And I said, I want to see the orange. And let's not limit the start time and click save. And he shows up right here, right? Mm hmm. So, but then I looked at the date and I looked at it, that was when we did the test phase. Next questions I asked was, what happens if I limit the start time to shake out, right? Start on the 16th, just to be generous. And then do the same thing, WB4, KSL, show it to me in orange, click on save, and there's no orange. Mm -hmm. So, he isn't on this map either, but when we look for him, WB4KSL, there are two of them, and one of them doesn't have an attachment. Uh -huh. Right? Mm -hmm. And that's the second one he sent, and we can check the date. That was the one he sent at um, 1517 UTC. Right. So that, but you guys are East Coast time, right? Yeah, that, that's about right for East Coast. Yeah, four hours. Yeah. I see so, five hours. Mm -hmm. and he did CCU. So you yeah, knew he I, sent I got it. it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And we got it too. But there is something amiss here. And that's something mm -hmm. that needs to be in, in, investigated. Right. Right. But and this is something that has to do with the CSV because we only, the map only did not 
mapped a single report, and that was because the longitude was missing. Every other report that was in the CSV was mapped by Luca Studio. That's pretty impressive. Hey, Lou. So Oliver's Marshall again. I want to make sure I did this right. I just have to forward it to Shakeout, right? Yeah, just just the word Shakeout. Tell you what, um, if everybody's okay with that, we'll just stay on. Let me know when you sent it, and I'll check right now. We'll see whether it comes in. I sent it about a minute ago. Well, let's take a look. You might already have might already be here. There's a lot of traffic here. And there you are. All right, cool. Thank you. Yeah. And here's the thing. Um, I can manually check the spreadsheet. And we can go down here. And give it a second. It needs to update the information. And there you are. And you should be on the map already. So if All we, right, cool. Yeah, if we now go to the shakeout map here and we go to the original KO6FJ. Oops. It might take a while. Well, hold on, we need to refresh the data. <laughs> yeah, it might take a moment for, for the system to read it, right? But yeah, keep checking sure. there because you should be in there um, pretty pretty quickly. Oh, not the comments, of course. It's got to be this K06. There you are. That's how quickly this went, everybody. Outstanding. Yeah. Cool. And thank you so much for being flexible and, and experimenting with this and kind of showing that this can be quite effective um, even for us amateurs, right? I actually like how fast it can act, update. Yeah, if if... If you have people like us um, on the other ends, right? Um, you on your end, um, us on our end, then we can actually make magic happen. And that's the beauty of the amateur radio hobby. That's what I really, really love about that. All right. Um, do you have any other questions, comments, concerns? All right. In that case, let me say again, thank you so much. You as the community made this happen. This was a whole community effort. I do want to say special thanks to Andy for getting uh, getting the ball rolling and kicking us into gear. You know, special thanks to all our friends worldwide, um, Finn, for, for checking in this early in the morning for you, right? <laughs> Time for bed. I'll let you go. And thank you so much, everybody, for participating. We really appreciate all of you. We appreciate our friends in Southern California and California, all of the U.S., and worldwide. So thank you so much for participating. And we hope you participate next year. And if we have another um, shakeout in June, participate in that. Why not? It'll be fun. All right. Thanks, Oliver, for your hard work. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank Oliver. you, Oliver. Good night, all. Yeah, ditto all of that, Oliver. Thank you for everything that you do. You do so much for us. It's awesome. You you are awesome, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Very fun together. We really appreciate yeah. it. Appreciate, appreciate, that. Yeah, appreciate what you do a lot. <laughs> I'll talk to you soon. We'll talk about the radio mail thing. See if we can figure out what's going on there. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. Thank, Thank you. Everybody. Good night. You Seven, three, Bye. All. We'll look forward to future presentations from you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dan. All right. Seven, three is all. We'll call it a night. And thank you for having us, Dan. Appreciate it.